Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode three. We made it to episode three, so that's cool. If you guys haven't already, uh, just a quick little shout out to our group we have, the um, Entrepreneurs Roundtable. So not only is it this kind of hangout podcast, but we have an actual group where we're able to go into more detail and support and answer questions and help each other out. So go to Facebook and search bar, just search for Entrepreneur Roundtable and you will, or Entrepreneurs Roundtable with an S, and you will find it and you can ask to be in it and you can add some of your friends and it's a great place. Yeah, do that. <laughs> All right, so first- Do that uh, now. Yeah, do it right now. <laughs> so right now, uh, I guess the intros are pretty minimal. I mean, if you know both, well, maybe you don't, but so I'm Jared, you know, Fist Dead Heroes, and then we got Mike Doyle here. What are you from, Mike? Um, I am, sorry, I'm just putting my water down. Um, I own, uh, actually I have two companies. Um, well, I have a company and that's something else I'm starting. So I've got Drive80, uh, which is drive80.com, which is an animation company. And I've got Paleo Riot, which is my personal blog about health. And I'm currently turning that more into my next projects. Drive 80 is off the ground, but, uh, Paleo Riot's my main focus, uh, at the moment. Yeah, and that's kind of that whole concept because I've done something similar where I dropped, you know, neat ideas and I'm going business heroes. That's kind of ties into today's topic, which is passion versus promotion. But before we get to that, I have a quick little challenge I want to offer up. Okay, so we're just getting started, obviously, and we need to get, you know, we'll get our views and stuff out there and, and subscribes, all that good stuff to, you know, keep this going. So if we can get 100 views on this episode, I... We'll shave my head. What? <laughs> I will now. I'm uh, to clarify. I mean, I'm not going to use a razor. I'm not going to, but I will take the clippers. No guard. I'll just cut it all off so you can see it's you know getting pretty long. Um, yeah, and it'll be done. And I'll I'll record the entire thing and put it up in the group for everyone to see. Uh, probably put on my Facebook page. So we have to get 100 views. So of course, obviously, the way to do that is not to sit there and get fresh over and over. I'm, not cool. <laughs> I'm adding that to my Facebook page now, stating that you'll do that. All right, cool. So the, obviously the best way to do that is to share the video, um, to like the video with a thumbs up, I guess, and then to uh, comment on the video. And I will probably, I'm thinking about like, I think comments I'll, I'll actually count as maybe as views or something, we'll, we'll see. We get a lot of comments, but we're not quite there in views. I'll probably do it anyways, because comments are pretty cool. So. <laughs> Yeah. Share, share away, and I will shave my head, and you guys will all get to, to see me with no hair. So, it's dedication, man. That's yeah. that is how that is a tip on how you um, can use that for promotion <laughs> for your business. Yeah. Well, so if you want to promote your business, tell them you'll shave your head. <laughs> so it's funny because I was listening earlier today. I had to go into the next town to pick something up. And I was listening to the thousand episode of Mr. G. And so Andrew Warner was talking to different people. Well, then they get to Noah Kagan. And the guy before was like, because he was asking like, hey, I'm having so-and-so on next. So it was like, I'm having Noah on next. What, what questions would you like me to ask him? He's like, I want to know how he comes up with his creative ideas. And I'm, I was like, okay, well, no, no, it's crazy. He comes up with the weirdest ideas. So like, uh, and they always seem to work. And even if they don't work, then he does an article about how it didn't work, and it turns into a marketing thing, right? So he's asking him, and he's talking about whatever, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute. I should do, like, a uh, shave my head challenge so we can hit that, you know, get our first, you know, 100 views on our, on our third episode. That's cool. <laughs> we better make this, uh, this interesting, then. People will be like, why the fuck are we watching this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our topic. So passion versus promotion. So first off, the first part of this is, what to do and how to overcome the whole like when you're working in your business and you just get burnt out or you get tired and you need to keep it going but you just don't feel like working that day or you just don't feel like going with forward with it anymore um and i, I bring up this topic because it's something that the three of us have talked about in our private mastermind group that we have every wednesday and the whole concept of just like, what do you do? Like, you got to keep going. You got to keep promoting. But, you know, if, if things aren't working or even if they are working, you're just, like, tired of just putting yourself out there day in and day out, um, how to overcome that and to keep going. So, do you got any tips for us, Mike? What did you say? What was the last part? Uh, I just was kind of handing it over to you to say you got any tips for us. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to, I had a conversation, so yesterday I had a conversation with Jared and we were discussing, um, you know, it's, it, all, it all kind of falls under the same idea of, if you have your own business, how do you get out of bed in the morning to do it? Because sometimes you're like, I still want to do this today. And it's like, you want to get up in the morning and exercise. And sometimes you're like, ah, I just don't want to do this today. I've never had a point where I've just put my feet on the ground and so let's say it's the gym. I just showed up. I've never said after the hour I was there, like that was a stupid idea because I always get the energy from it and it always benefits me. So same with business, it's, you know, sometimes the balance, like the majority of the time you should get up and just find something you can do to get a win out of it or something that's just easy to accomplish. Like maybe just send an email out to a list or um, I don't know, like send like two cold emails to someone you want to get in touch with and have that be a big thing or just find like a small task that you can just take a bite out of and that'll just rev you up to be like, all right, cool. Like this is going to energize me to do this. Um, it, you know, at the end of the day, you're the only one who's bringing in the money or you're the only one who's going to make yourself healthy. You know, no one's going to take you and prop propped you up and just kind of say like, okay, here's the next step. Like, let me lift your leg for you. It's like, you have to do this. So if you're entering this world, you have to do that. And I'm sure there's days where people who own giant businesses or CEOs or whatever, like they have those days as well. But if they succumb to that, you know, I don't want to, the shit just doesn't happen, you know? So you just have to force yourself to just take a step to do it, just something small. And I think that's, that'll get you going. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's that whole idea of, of that one action going to the next action. Like I know for myself, so, you know, we'll put the kids to bed and, you know, I've been working all day, so I'll take some time off and my wife and I'll watch, you know, watch a movie or something. And I'll get really tired from just, you know, sitting down and going all day. And then just now it's like, oh, okay, relax, you know, get sleepy. And so we'll watch stuff. And then if she's like, oh, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go to bed. And if I'm tired, I, I have two choices. I can either go, yeah, I'm tired. I want to go to bed too. Or I can be like, you know what? Let me just go in and do one thing just to get myself. It's like, okay, I'm too tired to go and work for the next couple hours like I was planning on. Well, let me go in there and do one thing. Let me straighten up my office. Let me send one email, do one Facebook post. As soon as I sit down, I get my laptop and I do that one thing. And then I'm like, I'm in it, right? So now I'm like, well, let me, let me work on this project, which is what I was planning on doing tonight anyways. Uh, and I feel like, let me just do it. And it's like that action takes on action. Yeah. And the next thing I know, it's like 4 a.m. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I'm not tired at all. I'm like wide up. I'm like, you know, just jacked on the excitement of like, I'm working on this project. And I'm like, do I want to go to bed and catch a couple hours of sleep before I have to get up with the kids? Or do I want to just like keep working? And because and, I want to finish this project I'm in the middle of. And, and it, it's so easy, like that whole momentum keeps you going. Because like I know it's really hard to sit down to work on a project, but once you're in a project, it's like, again, easy to just like, oh, especially with editing. It's like, oh, I gotta go edit that one thing. Yeah. The guys are, you know, and as soon as I do it, I'm like, oh, it's it's 345. Okay, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go to bed or am I just gonna finish it? And then it, it's easy to just keep going once you got something going. I think you also gotta realize too that the, everyone thinks that success comes in this silver platter. It's just, it's, um, you know, you make like your best clients or your best projects or, or sales, like just kind of, they just come to you in this and you're like, oh yes, like this is where it comes from. It's like, no man, it's, it's that day where you don't want to get up. That's the day where you make your biggest sale or you create the coolest thing or you accomplish something at the end of the day, it's such a 180 and you're like, oh my God, like I can't believe that happened today, you know? And it's, those moments don't just happen on the days you feel good those moments happen equally on the days where you don't want to do anything. So you can't look at the moment and see what it is you feel now. You have to look, kind of bring the future to the present and be like, you know, I don't want to do this, but let's say editing, I don't, because I know what it's like to edit and it is a bitch, man. But the moment you open up the program and you get the footage in, you're kind of like in this groove and it just takes you off and you know that it's just going to take you there and you're like, oh, but, and then the whole time you're in it, you're loving it, you know? So, you know, 
just taking that step and think about the end result. And if you don't do it today, you could, you know, what if it's a week from now? So for, for seven days or five business days, you're going to feel like that. So have that be your motivation. Like, I don't want to feel like this for another five days. Like I got to get this done. So the end of the day, I'm going to feel awesome. Tomorrow I'm going to feel really awesome and try to imagine what that feels like and live in that moment of that feeling. And I think that'll be like a good drive to get your ass up. Yeah. So with that, I kind of want to, this is still part of the topic, but it's also a little bit of a tangent. So that whole concept of, of discipline you know, and coming up with a drive. So I'm a, I've been raised, like I'm a big fan of like being disciplined, right? And it's like, I got this to-do list. I got to do it. I remember with my, I think it was probably my very first business. Uh, I right, actually even right out of high school, I started. I did uh, started doing video production. I was pretty, primarily weddings, and I hated editing these weddings. I hated going to them too. I, I, I only thing I liked was getting paid <laughs> for doing weddings. <laughs> but, um, so I hated doing them, and it was so hard to start. And I always focused on discipline and being disciplined. And if I had a hard time, if it was like, okay, on Monday I need to sit down. And just, just bust out this wedding. And then like Wednesday come around, I'm like, man, I'm still organizing the footage. Like what's wrong with me? You know, I'll work for like an hour, then I get distracted, I don't want to do it. I need to be more disciplined. And so for years, I've like focused on discipline. I mean, my dad's like probably the hardest working guy I know. I mean, like there's a joke in our family, like we were always a joke, um, we, the expression, it comes from John Wayne, but we heard it all the time was you're burning daylight. And it's like, you know, if the sun has come up all the way and you're not outside working yet, you know, you're burning daylight. Yeah. And this concept of discipline and hard work, and those are good traits, but what I've realized in a business like this, and I'm really making that the number one thing is discipline. And then I, 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 I heard this concept literally like a week ago, and I've been fascinated with it, and I'm, I'm literally like reverse engineering my life for the times I've been most happy and the times I've been like the least happy. And I found, and I'm using the case study of, another business I started, which was a complete failure, but I had a ton of fun doing it. I just wasn't doing the right things. And I was super, for like the first three months of it, like super happy. Like I was working crazy hours, but because I loved it. Like and I mentioned this once before, I was, I was literally having to force myself to take breaks because I was like physically in pain from sitting for so long. <laughs> the computer, I didn't have a laptop, I had a desktop and a really uncomfortable chair. And I'd have to be like, I have to do something. Let me take the kids and go swimming for an hour. Like I have to like give my, my body a break. You know, like my wife would be like, I called you for dinner like 12 times. It's cold now. The kids are almost done. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. One second. I was like, how was I so happy then? And then when I started the ideas, I wasn't as happy. Like I was just focused on making money. And so I started looking at the little things and then that whole concept of happiness really clicked. I, I, I think, you know, it's one of those things when you start to like, hear something and like you start to hear more and more you start to notice it so I started hearing some stuff like in a, one in an audio book and then I saw like an, someone asked a question in a group and that led to some other resources and this this concept of doing what makes you happy I know Noah talks about this a lot too and I've known to just shrug it off as like yeah but you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta be disciplined and I realized okay when I started that one business I got so much work done because I was happy and I was enjoying it and then when I did night ideas like it was so hard to get any work done and that's because at that point my number one principle was just discipline now so now I'm looking at you know this dev heroes and I'm like why how can I get that back so I started focusing on okay what made me happy then and I started doing those same things and it's made a huge difference and then it, it I've gotten a lot more work done too so like not to say like discipline isn't you know whatever but if I'm looking at a to-do list of 10 things I need to get done, like in, you know, any given time, like I'm launching a course or, you know, whatever, and I have these options, in the past, I would look at them and go, okay, which one do I want to do the least? Okay, let me be disciplined and work on that. And then it would take me forever to get done versus what I've been experimenting with for the last, you know, week or two is, which one do I look at and do I get like butterflies, like I'm excited to work on? And let me dive into that one. And then that's what I've been noticing. So when I was doing eight ideas, it would be like, you know, 12 o'clock would run, roll around, and I'd be like, man, I'm so tired. Or even 10.30, I went to bed at 10.30 a lot, and then now that I'm focused on, okay, which project am I super excited to get out? And I've been working on that, I've been like literally 3, 4 a.m., and it's like, oh, I should probably stop. It's like, but then I'm not tired. Like one night, I, I was like, okay, it's 3 a.m., I have to go to bed, and I laid in bed for an hour trying to go to sleep, which I haven't done that in my adult life, like ever. Like I lay down, and like five minutes I'm <laughs> asleep. 
I'm exhausted, right? And I laid there for an hour. All I could think about was like what I was going to do in the morning when I woke up. Yeah. And I, I hear entrepreneurs talk about that, but I've not really experienced that since that one business. And so again, I just went back to what was I doing then? What can I do now? And so I've been doing that and I'm, I'm starting to feel that again. And so to me, I'm like, man, maybe not to downplay discipline because I know it's super important, especially with certain jobs and like and stuff like that. But it's like, what if maybe discipline was the vehicle, but it, happiness is the fuel? You know, like it doesn't matter how nice your car is if you don't have any fuel. So that's just kind yeah. of what's been on my mind. Yeah, man. I think the same thing. Like you have to have passion behind it. You know, it's that that's, you know, I said this, um, I did this interview the other day and I said, you know, if you have a lot of passion, it's like having gasoline. And, you know, you can have a gallon, you know, your whole body could just be metaphorically full of gasoline, but gasoline is, it's not going to ignite unless there's a spark, you know? So if you have a lot of gasoline, it's not going to do, you know, yes, it can, it can fuel a car, but it needs that power. It needs that ignition to do that, you know? So you could be sitting there and if you have this excitement, everyone's got passion in them and that's the gasoline. But sometimes they take that and they're like, oh, I'm going to go do this. But that spark doesn't like if you light a spark, I mean, there's an explosion, you know, and you have to think of it like that. So if you don't have that spark, it's just not going to be that I'm going to get out of bed at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. and go do this. Or I'm not going to get out of the bed at a bed at 4, you know, 430 in the morning and go work out at a gym or something. You know, it's like it's, it's again, it's your why, but it's it's that passion behind something. I think if you have that passion, it it makes it goes along with getting out of bed. But sometimes, you know, that like even having passion, you have those dips. It, it's not just this like, you know, completely going up mm -hmm. all the time. There are dips and then there's in the like skyrocks and stuff. But well, if you're consistently if you just if you're consistently not able to get out of bed, you should really re-examine what you're doing. Yeah, you know I mean, that's good. And let's talk for a minute about those dips because, like you said, even doesn't matter how happy, how passionate, whatever word you want to use about it, there are still those days, and sometimes those days can be you know, hours, days, weeks. Brutal. <laughs> um, yeah, but so let's let's talk about that for a minute. Like, what are some things you do on on those days? One, I guess, to help for the day and then also like what do you do if you start to notice you're having too many of those days back to back uh, i sell all my stuff and go on the road <laughs> that's funny because i ditched my business and started a new one that, <laughs> I, had too many days. I mean that literally that was too many days uh so if anyone watching this is no like so i back in uh february i sold all my stuff Literally, I sold and donated all my stuff and took like kept like five percent of it and started. Now I'm literally traveling the country. So I right now I'm in Santa Monica. The last video we did, I was in Redondo Beach. So the point is, I got so fed up because I couldn't get out of bed and I was exhausted and it was stress, it was depression, and I lived with it for almost a year. And there's a lot of other stuff going on, but. I just literally got fed up and I had to do a giant change. So it was literally, I had thought of it, like I could sell my stuff and my business is remote. I could do this and blah, blah. I was like, yeah, I don't know. It sounds difficult. It sounds difficult. I don't know how to do it. I was worried about the how. And then literally within a Saturday, I was like, fuck this. I'm doing it. Sunday, I kind of dwelled on it. And Monday, I was like, I'm doing it. So it was like a two day turnaround and I was like, screw this. And then within 26 days, I'd sold everything. So you know, sometimes you just get to your breaking point and you should flip it. Um, other days when you're in it and there's a dip, like that was a fucking valley, you know, like that was a valley, it was the Grand Canyon and there was no like filling dirt in that thing because it was like, this is going to take me forever. There's this pointless. But sometimes there's that dip because I think it's the universe's way of saying, how bad do you want this? Because if it dips and you still know that it's what, you in your gut is what you want to do and it's right you know it's it's a test and i think it can catapult you in that direction you need to go is that does that make sense yeah i i mean mine was very similar like, i obviously didn't pick up a move um but that wasn't i didn't feel like that was as much of my issue when i had my you know the native ideas the marketing social media marketing kind of consulting business I was having the same issue where I was just frustrated. I was like, even, I mean, I don't think I quite got to like depressed or anything, but I was just, I, I was having a hard time doing the work. I had too many of those days. 
Um, and I started to notice it getting worse. Like, so it got to the point where like every Monday it was hard to get back to work. So I would go for a drive. I'd listen, I'd grab like a rock star, sometimes two and some snacks and I'd drive around and, and then that got longer and longer. So then it was like every Monday it was like half the day. And then it got to where like it was Monday and Tuesday. And then it got to the point where like it took me like Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday just to psych myself up. And then I'd work like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then like half a day Sunday. Yeah. And then, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And so it was too many. Like I was gaining weight from all the energy drinks. I was like no energy. I didn't want to do any of the work. And I was like, you know what? There's something wrong here. And then so that's why when I, I scaled back, I got down to just one client. I was doing that full time. And then when, when I was done with them, I was like, I don't want to go back to this. Like I don't want to go out and pick up more clients doing the same thing. And I'd already had the idea of Biz Dev Heroes. And I was like, why don't you just do it? Like, what's the point? Like, the whole reason to quit my job, and I had a good job. It was like, the whole reason to quit my job was to be my own boss like, and not to dread Mondays and yeah. to be able to have freedom. So why? So I now have all those negatives of the job again, except for I also don't have, like, the security of, like, every single month to get paid the exact same, or, like, you know, every two weeks or whatever, like, and I was like, that made no sense, you know, not having the, the life insurance and all that, or health insurance, I guess, all that stuff. It's like, why am I getting the, the, the worst of both situations? Like, I don't have the good part of a job, and I don't have the good part of being an entrepreneur. <laughs> and I hear that Steve Jobs line, like, you know, like, you know, he talks about that quote, if you, you know, wake up and look in the mirror and ask yourself, I think he said he asked himself the question, like, am I happy or excited about what I'm doing today or whatever? And right. he said no too many days in a row, he would, he would quit and do something else. Yeah. And I just got to that point where I was like, I can go back to what I'm doing. I could go back to and get a job, which is also not, you know, ultimately what I want. So I was like, well, let me take a chance because you know, Biz Dev Heroes seemed too too good uh, to be true, like to make money doing something I absolutely love, and then like to do something like, oh, I'm going to go out there and help people. You know, it just seemed like, how do I monetize that? How do you monetize like doing your passion and helping people? Uh, yeah. So yeah, I finally just did it, and it's like a night and day difference between energy levels and happiness and contentment. And like you said, so now the bad days are half a day or a day versus like three weeks, four weeks, you know, that kind of thing. I think that some people, a lot of people who are entrepreneurs as well, is they, you know, they're they taking that step to quit your job is so big that it's almost like all eyes are on you, or you think all eyes are on you, like waiting for you to succeed or fail. And you have this one idea and you think that this is going to catapult you, but maybe that idea was just the thing that you needed to do the real idea, which in essence could be 10 ideas from now. Mm -hmm. you know, when I first started becoming an entrepreneur, I was 17 and I got in a van with a bunch of buddies and we toured the country as a band. And I thought I was going to be this big rock star. Like, you know, we were playing with bands like New Found Glory and like all these, these guys who stayed, they got big. And I was like, oh, we're going to be that. And then it died. And I was like, oh, shit. And then it led into, you know, other stuff that I had to do. So it all made sense on where it brought me to now. And then like even now, you know, I had Drive 80 and, it, and I made it work. But it just, I just don't feel it with it. It didn't go in the direction I wanted to. So I'm not turning the lights off. I'm keeping it going. But now my passion shifted and now it's going with Paleo Riot. So you got to kind of follow that. And at a point, there's a point where you're like, you know what? Everyone keeps seeing like, man, like how many businesses are you going to have? And you're like, until it fucking works. Like that's how many goddamn businesses I'm going to have. You know, until I am successful and I can live off of it and I feel every day and I look in the mirror and I'm like, I am happy at what I'm doing. You know? So if you have a business it, it, that doesn't define you like that one idea is supposed to if it doesn't if it fails it's there's no failure there's only opportunity you know and I've heard that many times you have to learn what it means and it was supposed to happen to get you to where you're going and if your goal is that I will never work like for me I will never work for someone again like I unless for some reason I truly feel it like in my gut now I'm like I will not work for anybody and that's kind of my passion when things start going shitty. I'm like, you're never working for anyone again, so you really need to make this happen. And you have got to pay these bills, so you better figure something out. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I feel like I can't work for someone. Like, I can try, and it's going to be a band-aid because it's only going to work for, yeah. you know, it used to be a year. Now it's been, it's been, I've been doing stuff that's even less. So it's like I, I have to figure it out because a band-aid is obviously not going to you know, work. Um, yeah. But yeah, there was something you said. I got distracted by that band comment. Oh, okay. So you're talking about the whole 
build businesses. So like I hear, I, I listen to a ton of podcasts, I read books and stuff. And the thing that I hate is when they go, oh, I had all this failed stuff. And then I finally made it. And then I, you know, I was for the entrepreneur, uh, Noah's group, the monthly 1K, you know, how to make your first dollar course. There's this, this, in that group, there seems to be this idea of like, you have to find like your perfect idea and you go off and build this great business. Even though he has the tools to do that, it's like, yeah, but we don't realize it's like, there is that process. Like you said, you started at 17, you know, jumping in a van um, yeah. and I, I put all some stuff. So one of my favorite things is there was an interview. It was one of those sumo dojos between Neville and Noah where they literally took like 10 minutes and just talked about like all the failed or semi failed like businesses. Oh they, yeah. They, and that was amazing to me. Cause like, I'm thinking like Neville, like he's literally, at least he's either a liar or he's literally never had a job from what he said. He yeah. graduated college and just started a business. And I was like, and they talk about all these failed ideas. So you think of him and you're like, Oh yeah, this just this really great guy. And you, you I heard that and he talked about all these felt businesses. Same thing with, with Noah, right? Like you hear like the, the glory story of how he started out sumo and it sounds amazing, but then you listen to other stuff and he talks about like all these failed things, even creating these big businesses and just being like shut down by Facebook and all this kind of stuff. So it, I, I thought it'd be worth it, I think, if to take a couple minutes and maybe talk about if you're comfortable with it, some yeah. of like our old failed or semi failed or even successful businesses we walked away from. Uh, so is, was that your first thing as, as, did you have any like smaller stuff as a kid or was that like your first main thing? You know, it's funny. I thinking back, I actually, my, you remember airbrushes like airbrushing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mom bought me one of the, I was really artsy when I was a kid and my mom bought me one of these things. And this thing was expensive. It had a generator and all this stuff. Yeah. They give me a couple hundred dollars for just a halfway decent one. Not even a professional. Yeah, man. I mean, they were, they were intense. Like yeah. And the paint and all this, I mean, it's, it's like a thousand dollar investment, like along the cross, you know, in the long run. Yeah. So I remember being a little kid and uh, I think this was the first case of wanting to be an entrepreneur. So I drew a flyer of, I'd heard about uh, painting, like there was a big business and girls getting their nails done for prom. And I was like, Oh, I've got an airbrush. Girls want to get their nails done. So I made a flyer about <laughs> doing nails for girls. And I, I, the flyer basically went from my house to uh, my house. You know, I never made copies <laughs> of it. I never did anything with it. But I just had this idea that I was going to do that. So in a sense, like that was a business I wanted to start and it didn't go anywhere because I didn't put anything behind it. And I also, what you know, it just didn't go anywhere. I think it was like 12 at the time. But the businesses I've been through. So... Uh, my band, I had a punk band called Lane Meyer when I was 17 to 22. That was my first business partnership in a sense because it was, you know, four guys in a van with completely different, you know, vision of where the, where the, uh, the business or the band was going to go. So that was my first lesson. And if you're going to have a business partnership, you all need to have the same vision of where you want to go. You need to put in the same effort. You need to bust your ass and all that stuff. So that was that. Then I had a t-shirt company when I was 22. Um, that taught me, that launched me into going back to school. So there was, the, so it failed, but it, the opportunity was I wanted to go to grab, go get my degree. So I got that. And then what are the other ones, I had another t-shirt company. I had started another like band kind of, um, what else did I do? Shit. I had a business partnership with this other guy. We did web development and that failed. We start, and we actually, that one, within a year, our last project was a $25,000 project that we, we earned and we gained. And he decided at the last minute he didn't want to do it anymore, so we broke ways. But from that one, I learned how to develop an LLC. So I went on to, so when I started Drive 80, right after that, I was like, oh, I know how to drive, do an LLC now, which is really stupid easy. You just go online and fill up paperwork and pay 125 bucks, and you have one. Um, so we'll see what else. Freelancing, I did that for a really long time, but I actually made money. Uh, Drive 80, when I started, was like a bunch of different things, and then it just let, then all those things failed, but then it led into just doing animation. So then I found that, but then my prices skyrocketed because it would, I knew what it would really cost. And then all of a sudden, my, you know, the clients I was, was gaining, 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 all of a sudden, I was like, that just leveled off completely. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> you know? I was so. Yeah, there's been a bunch. I had a lot of business partnerships in between there too that I keep forgetting about. But I just know I know that me and business partnerships are are in the past have not worked very well. Um, I, I think I would know how to do one now, 
but um yeah like i've had lots of them where i've gotten involved with other people and i just have completely different ideas on doing shit so yeah, yeah so t-shirt companies bands web company uh a t-shirt printing company i did online printing uh, t-shirt company i did that yeah bunch of shit right, cool and yeah. it sounds, I mean, literally, without you even pointing out, I can hear, like, little things that you learned from each one that you were able to take into the next thing and do a little bit better. Yeah. It sounds like, so, yeah, so for me, it's funny, because I know, and I wish Gideon was on here for this, because he talks about how um, he never really was, and then all of a sudden, after the military, he's, he got into stuff, but he didn't do any of the traditional stuff growing up. So, like, for me, I did. Like, I was always... I didn't think of myself as an entrepreneur, but I was always just trying to make money. I was never really trying to figure out how to make a business until I got a little bit older, but I always wanted money. And normally my grandma was the target. So like I would like mow her lawns. <laughs> uh, I would find work to do. Like I would do lemonade stands. And then again, it'd be at my grandma's house because she'd put up with all this. And so like I'd do a lemonade stand, she'd go buy all the stuff. And then like I'd go pick the like the plums out of her tree and sell plums and, and lemonade. And I'd do pretty well, you know, make twenty something dollars every time. So I was like, I always had this knack for like, I never was able to create anything sustainable as a kid, but like, like some kids I know will have like a, whether it be a lawn mowing business or like a babysitting business and they keep it going. Right. And they're able to get a reputation. Like one of my wife's uh, old boyfriends from when they were like, you know, pretty young and still like were like family friends and stuff. Like they actually started doing the whole lawn thing and they kept it going. And I was never about that. Cause I was always like, either playing or like working on like my comic books, right? I wanted to be a comic book artist. So I would just go, I have a need. How can I make, I've reverse engineered, how can I get money? So like when I was really little, like a new Ninja Turtle or Batman toy would come out, I'd be like, I have to have that. That costs this much money. Okay, if I can do this, this, and this, like I can make money. So I always had that knack for like finding ways to go out and make money. That's awesome. And then I remember um, when, okay, so then I wanted to create a comic book company. That was like my goal, my dream for, for years up until high school and then I got into media production stuff. So I had this idea where I, I drawn this picture and it was like the best picture I'd ever drawn. It was this really cool got character I made up and it was like I just spent like tons of time upgrading my skills to learn how to do the shading. And so I convinced my dad to go in the office and make copies and he was like, no, I can't do that. It's like state property. I should, I'm not supposed to do that. And I bugged him like for like two weeks until he finally did it because my friend was having a yard sale. So I had all these like black and white color or these black and white copies of this picture I drew and I was like, I'm gonna sell them for like a quarter at this yard sale. Kind of did the same thing you did with the the t-shirt thing. Like as far as I got was making the copies, I showed up all ready to do it. And as soon as like the first person came up and saw the pile and goes, What is this? I was like, Oh, uh oh, oh. I turned to my buddy and go, Did you leave these out here? And I dropped them <laughs> and I away. Like I totally chickened out because it was like <laughs> I was like, I couldn't handle the criticism. I was like, I went from like being way up high to like, this is the best drawing ever to like, uh oh, someone might not like it. And I grabbed yeah, it. Was, and I it grabbed. became reality. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so I did all that. So my first like real like try, I guess, was and it was actually kind of by accident. Was around my senior year in high school. Um, I had I'd been doing a lot of you know video stuff. I, I always I had my camera and stuff. I always had. A, copy of like video maker magazine or something like that you know so I had this reputation so we had a family member we we're going to their wedding and they asked me to record it and I was like sure and you know so I recorded it and she like paid me 300 bucks like oh here thank you and I was like that, wow 300 dollars I mean again I was in high school I hadn't had a job um, that was pretty cool and then like a little bit later her next daughter got married so this time I was like okay this is a business like I want five hundred dollars and she's like, all right, here. And then, like, word starts. I actually did three of her daughter's weddings um, and every time it got more. And then the word got out. And then it really picked up when an aunt's uh, cousin, I don't know, somewhere, a uh, family member who was really connected started putting the word out. And so I started just getting all these weddings. And I started, like, I started just trying, like, all these marketing tech, tech, uh, techniques and tactics. I was, like, doing, like, direct response mail, like, when I was engaged and you know we're doing all like the wedding invitations, like I took that list and I emailed or I sent out a letter to like everyone. Um, like a year after my wedding, I, I went and got that old list and like direct response to like everyone. I learned about how to write a direct response letter. I went and bought yeah. a, a stamps. Like I remember feeling. So I would have been. So I got married when I was nineteen. So I would have been twenty when I did this. 
And I remember feeling like so proud of myself, like so grown up that I, when I went down to Costco and spent 36 bucks to get a hundred stamps <laughs> to like, not to like, not buy a piece of equipment. Like, Oh, if it was like for a microphone or something, that would make sense. But like to like, no, a marketing thing. And I was listening to podcasts. Like I'm doing like a paid membership. I was paying for like a, a paid newsletter with some resources and stuff. And that's where I first started learning about business. And Oh, Hey, Gideon's here. Hey, Hey, What's he up? heard this topic and, and wanted to jump in on it. Cool. Hell yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, I'll finish up and we'll, we'll jump over to Gideon. And so I did a bunch, and I did that. And so that was like, I did that for quite a while. Um, I even quit a couple jobs when I was first married so I could like better do the whole wedding thing. My wife and I uh, would go out and do them together. And she, I hated them. Like I would literally wake up, you know, like weeks before the wedding um, from like in cold sweat. If I had a nightmare, like I showed up to the wedding with like no batteries or like no tapes or something. It was like mini DV. So I eventually I quit that business when I got a I got a full time job, a uh, good video production job because it was too stressful. Like I had to <laughs> it was one of those like I got into a business without actually becoming a, 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 a entrepreneur yet. So like all the business stuff stressed me out. Like I was good at the craft, but like I couldn't handle the business side of it. Yeah, and I'd gotten mentored by a guy who was very successful, and like, and I was asking about taxes and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, man, I just don't feel like I'm the kind of person who can handle that, like filing quarterly taxes, like, you know. <laughs> and so, like, I eventually dropped it as soon as I got this like full time job at the county doing video production. Like, I'd have people call me, and it's funny. Like, I remember, like, at first I told people like, well, I don't do that anymore, and people didn't seem to like take that as an answer. They're like, well, so and so told me you did their wedding, you're really good. So what I did is I raised my prices so high that it was like, okay, I don't want to do this. I'll put the price so high that either, one, they'll just go away, or two, they're like without fighting me, or two, like if they agree to it, like I would gladly do it for that amount of money. And I eventually just phased my business out. Um, and it was a few years. I didn't do business stuff for a while. I, I tried a couple of like online media platforms. Like I heard about Rev3 or Revision3. And I tried to copy that a couple times, and I could never get any traction with it. I had no business model. Um, I even like hired Noah for it. That's how I first met Noah. Like I hired him for an hour to like help me. He's like, dude, there's like no business model. Like this is. <laughs> he was like, how are you gonna make money? I was like, well, if I get like a million clicks, I could make like a thousand dollar. He's like, that's not a business model. He's <laughs> like, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, but it was funny because so I paid him two hundred fifty dollars for that hour long call. That was when he first started it. And I remember, like, literally, so I was working as a youth pastor at a time. It was a two-story building, and I was moving these tables because I saw it, and I was like, oh, I should do this, but I don't really have the money. And it was right after, so uh, it was, like, the beginning of, like, January or, January, or, you know, kind of thing. So, like, I'd had some birthday money and some Christmas money, like, I hadn't spent yet. And I was, like, going up and down. Like, I'd go up, and I'd grab a table, and I'd go to move it. I was like, you know what? I need to get down there right now because it's limited. He's like, there's only, like, ten of these or whatever he's going to do. So like I'd go, like, I gotta get down there right now and buy it before they're sold out. I'd get down there, they weren't sold out yet, and then I go, uh, I don't know. I'd chicken out. I'd go back <laughs> upstairs, I'd move another table, and I did this for like 35 minutes, and I was like, you know what, I'll just do it, I'll sleep on it, and if I wake, because you know, back then AppSumo had like the lifetime and like, refund thing. So it's like, if I wake up still feeling sick, I'll just ask for a refund, bow out, and let someone else have the spot. And then I ended up doing it, and like I literally in that hour, it was like an hour and 20 minutes, he went over for me. Um, I think he had pity on me because I just had nothing, you know, like it was totally horrible what I was trying to do. I learned so much in that like hour that I then started like my next business off of it and that was the one I was talking earlier about how I had a ton of fun and then that, doing that business is what taught me, um, I learned all the technical stuff and again, I never, it never went anywhere because I, I had, as I mentioned in the group today, is like I had an idea that was not only did the did my target market not once, but it about 80% of them were offended by it, by the fact that I was trying <laughs> to suggest they needed it. So that complete, I still to this day think it's a great idea, but it's just like, it would, it's one of those like you watch Shark Tank, and like, this is a great idea, but it would cost so much to educate the market, they're like, I'm out. And that was basically what it was. It was like, it's a good idea, but it would have taken so much time to educate the market of why they need it and build those relationships. I finally just said, okay, I'm out. That's when I got into my sales job, saying I need to learn some sales. I did that yeah. that year. And then I'll wrap this up so we can get the Gideon, because I want to hear his. Um, and I did Nate Ideas for about a year and a half. No, about two years. And then got pulled into a full-time client. Same, Gideon got pulled into the same thing. Both of us got let go about the same amount of time. Um, and then that's when we both decided not to go 
well, I'm going to speak for him. I decided not to go back to Nate Ideas and start over to start his death heroes. And then, boom. So now I'm here. So, all right, that's me. Go ahead. Boom. <laughs> So Gideon, we're at, we're talking about our failed businesses leading up till right now. We're kind of just listing off what they were. So we want to see if you want to throw your two cents in there of uh, your your past experiences, and quote unquote failures. Um. Yeah. So I, you know, I was listening in on the background, and I heard you guys talking about that's that's what got me interested, like all the failed businesses. Yeah. And like you know, your guys is like an entrepreneurial story, and how you guys got started, or like had the, the little spirit in you. Um, me and my friend, when we were kids, like I guess like like, like in high school or just after high school, um, we would sit at the same bar practically like five or six nights out of the week, and we would just dream. We would drink and dream. So we would just write down a whole bunch of different business ideas, and we wanted it to be like uh, like hip hop oriented, you know, like throwing events and things like that. And then, um, so we finally got the balls to <clears throat> ask this restaurant um, to host, like, an event for us. And, like, you know, we would do all the promotions and things like that, and, like, the dude was just, like, flat out no. And we're like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that was, like, our first failure. And I think after that, it was, like, we just kind of gave up on everything, right? So we went about our days and, you know, like working jobs or whatever. Um, I used to be a mechanic at Mercedes for about eight months before I got I got fired for a car that I shouldn't have been working on in the first place. That that you, almost got, you almost got killed on working on it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, lower control arm uh, almost like slammed in my face because we didn't have a part to compress the spring on the strut. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I've had gasoline get in my eyes and armpits, and that shit burns, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it sucks because when you shower, all the gasoline, you know, drips down your body towards your crotch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, I got let go, and after that, like, it, I don't know. It was really easy for me to like find jobs. So like, I would get. I like. I can't hold a job. That's part of the reason why I don't like working at jobs. Um. But it was really easy for me to just get let go or quit or whatever, and then the next week I like I'd have another job, and so like some of the biz, one of the like I guess biggest business ideas that I had that failed was um, I was going to help people um, land interviews, right? So like people who used to make six figures and help them land interviews, and like. I did this because I wrote a I wrote a sales letter to this marketing comp uh, marketing uh, firm, and it was it was all handwritten, direct mail, FedExed it, and like I totally skipped all their prerequisites and everything they were asking for in the uh, application, and I mailed it to directly to the uh, marketing director, and I landed an interview, so I like pretty much went around everybody, right, who was like sending in their resumes and all this stuff. Uh, I didn't get the job. They gave it to some intern or whatever. Whatever. But <laughs> using that idea, I was like, okay, I'm going to help other people land, land interviews. And then, like, if they land that job, then the compensation would be, um, you know, like the initial, like, $500 to, like, do the work. And if they land a the job, it's, like, 10% of their monthly salary for a year. Wow. Really? Right? Yeah. Jesus. That's that's what that's the way that I that I modeled it. Now I so, will interject with but this is when I first met Gideon is yeah. just another guy in the Epsimo group and then he posted about this and like, oh I don't know, that could and maybe not, I don't know. And then like someone else posted like sharing like some early success he had. I was like, Who's this Gideon guy? And I was like, Who's your attention to what he's doing? And this is where I first ended up meeting you and kind of becoming friends with you. Yeah, it is that yeah, that was the time, like, what, 2013 when we first met? Mm -hmm. And um, so I actually had, like, five or six people who were really interested in this. And these were people who were, who were out of work who used to be, like, this one guy, he, he sold metal coy equipment to companies. This guy made, like, $150,000 a year. And then he got let go by his company, and he, he just hasn't been able to get another job. So I was like, oh, shit, okay, well, let me land you another six-figure, you know, interview. But, uh... 
the reason that it, it failed after talking to all these people is because nobody had any skin in the game, right? So I did all these interviews with them, like figuring out what the problem is and how I can help them, and everybody's super excited about it. But then when it comes time to like actually pay up, like the you know five hundred dollars, whatever, they're like, oh well, you know, I I got bills coming up and this and this and this. I'm like, yeah, we all do. Wow. You know, but like, how long are you gonna sit there? Like the guy, the guy started looking for jobs as a pizza delivery guy. Oh. <laughs> the guy was making one hundred fifty k. He was looking for jobs as pizza pizza delivery because he didn't yeah. want to pay you five hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Why did yeah. you never package this and sell it as a <clears throat> as like an online course? I I thought about it. It was just one of those things where like you know you go through a failure and you're like this fucking sucks. Like nobody's ever gonna really buy into this. So no, instead of like, like, but just well, something that was like a set it and forget it, where it just kind of would just accumulate. You know, it just it's working as we it'd be working for as we speak right now. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things where like I got so close to the line and then yeah. met failure and then so I, I backed away from that line. Uh, so okay. I was like, okay, I need to do something else, right? Because like poor people in this poor economy, can you know like who's gonna buy? You know, <laughs> um, I, I just didn't know how to how to move forward with it, so I just left it alone. You know? Okay. I don't know. I have a friend who uh, they're out of uh, they're looking for. A job, and they're like, I don't know how I'm going to interview. So as soon as I, as soon as you said that, I was like, I, I don't, I, you know, it's one of those where I'd be like, oh, here's this course. It's for X amount of dollars. You can buy this and download it. But well, yeah, because instead of doing it as a consulting service for the 500, right, you, you pre-record it, you automate it, you make it like 100 or 150 or something, you know, that would fit in there. But Gideon, yeah. I, I completely understand where you're coming from, like, because that was the same way with that that one business I said that like I fitted most of the market. Like, I saw how I could pivot and how I could do it differently, but at that point, I'd invested, like, three or four months. I'd invested, like, all my savings, and I was emotionally spent, and it was like, I can either start over, admit I was wrong, figure this out, or I can go get a job and get paid in 30 days. And, like, I chickened out, and I went, not that I chickened out, but I was like, I was just so spent, like, and it took me, I had to recharge and then come back. That's when I came back with the ideas, because I was just like, I, I couldn't... How I didn't have the in, uh, energy, the emotional energy to pick that up from the ashes. So I totally see what you're saying. When you say you got so close to the line and then it didn't work, and that you were just done with it, you didn't want to like step back and figure out how to make it actually work. I, I, I hear you there. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where like you can get so close to the line, and all you have to do is just like just dig a little bit deeper, and you would have hit a gold mine, right? Mm -hmm. But that's where like majority of people stop at. It's like they spend all this time, and they're kind of like you know, doing all the wrong things and not getting guidance or asking for help. Yeah. If like that that's like one thing you can do as an entrepreneur is just ask for help. You yeah. Know, from, from anybody who's like doing better than you are, ask for their help. And it's not a bad thing to ask for help. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes too, it's um people forget those old ideas and they kind of just they leave them behind and they're like, oh that's dead in the water. But I know I mean I don't think I'd want to go back and start another band like I was when I was 17. I don't have the same passion for it. But I have the mentality that if I did go back and if I could talk to that person at 17 and say, this is what you should do, I think it would have been a different story in a sense. Yeah. Um, so sometimes maybe it's like those old ideas. You can think about them and be like, how could I redo this? Is that like what really got me going in all this stuff was um, what got me into graphic design is I started a t-shirt company. And to this day, I still want to sell T-shirts like with my own designs. So I always try to think of how to incorporate that in any of my business. So I have for like Paleo Riot, I keep thinking of all these ideas of T-shirts. I want to do that, but it's got to go along with why someone would buy this. So it's like I'd rather create the movement first, get the people involved. So when they're wearing the shirt, it means something. Like yeah. um, you know, like the life is good, all that that whole company. You know, people who buy the shirt, they buy the sticker, they buy the cup, they buy, like, they all are part of something, so, like, it's, like, my whole, it's, like, it's got to have something that's wrapped around it, so I guess going back on anything, it's, like, I always try to look back and, like, what do I still believe in? What could really work? It's, like, Kevin Smith, I think he, Dogma was what he really wanted to do, and, but he did Clerks first, and then he did Dogma third, because Clerks and Mallrats ended up helping him fund, giving him the money so he could do Dogma, but he never gave up on Dogma. Right. I think right. that's true. I, I, I swear that's true. 
So sometimes you can always go back and, and look at these and be like, damn, like, like that idea with the whole getting people in an interview, like, that's fucking huge. So I wouldn't, I, I know you're in a different, like, a different place or what you want to do, but that would be a cool product to make, man. I think that would be something super easy, like a four video series of talking how to do it with, like, some kind of worksheet, sell it for 97 bucks, throw it online and just set it and forget it, you know? Right. I don't know. Yeah, you sell I, you sell ten, you get a thousand bucks right there. So, no, I mean definitely like the 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 thought of it pops in my head like every so often. I'm like, you know, I have this thing, and like, and I even have like a testimonial as far as like um, one of my friends' daughters used my letter as a template. She's 13 years old in Germany. Uh, so I guess in Germany, like they have this, this kind of like, uh, like all students or like high school students have to go through like this interning program when they're in high school. And um, so she wanted a job at like the radio station or something like that, but like only college people apply to those. So she used my template and she got herself an intern as at the radio station. <clears throat> I mean, that's that's awesome. You know? That's a success, man. Maybe like yeah. you just you far, you 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 market this to again. It's got to be something you want to do, man. But. I don't know. Like, when I hear ideas, I'm like, fuck, that's such a cool idea. <laughs> then I look at my own, I'm like, god, they're so awful. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like every time you hear about, like, an entrepreneur on an interview, you're like, man, I wish I had his business to work on, you know, versus, Always. like, my own. <laughs> yeah, I want an AppSumo so bad. I want, like, oh. I just, I was like, why didn't I think of this? I think it's one of the reasons I joined AppSumo, because I was like, I want to be Noah Kagan. I want to be <laughs> number 30 in some, some place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, raise your hand if that's true about you. Which part? <laughs> what you just said. <laughs> oh. you know, we all started off with like, what's this AppSumo thing? Like, I, that was my first thing. I, I remember like, uh, I found it. I was like, I was kind of pissed off. Like, why are you gonna make me give you my email address before I can even see it? I typed it in, and it was like, I went into the website, and it was like the light shined out on my computer, and I was like, I want to be Noah Kagan. <laughs> Dude, I world. spent a week sitting on my couch doing the entire Entrepreneur or the 1K uh, product. It Did you ever do like the everything. old courses, like the the sumo no. blueprint thing? No, yeah, I, did the I sumo just got it just, first. Well, I was it was funny because I was I had dedicated that week, and I was like, I want to revamp my business. Like it was when Drive eighty was like, I want to revamp it and make it, you know, because I had like Drive eighty when I started was very safe and business, and I was going to um, like a chamber of commerce, and I was like, you can't say this because it's too extreme. And I was like, fuck this, man. This is not how I speak. So I sat down for a week after Christmas. It was 2013 that week, and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to just research people that I find inspirational. So I went on Tim Ferriss's website within 10, Christ, man, two minutes. Kill your entrepreneur ad comes up on the right. I was like, that's something <laughs> I wanted to clicked it, and that entire week just put me in to that system. And it was like, damn, like that one second. But it was also what I was looking for. So sometimes, like, my gut was you have to sit down and just, you know, it goes back to the beginning of this conversation is when I, I didn't want to get up. And I'm like, I need some spark. So I was like, I'm just going to, today, I'm going to sit on my couch. I'm going to research inspiration. And then that flipped everything, you know? So sometimes if you can't get out of bed, just turn your computer on and be like, what's going to inspire me? Like, go listen to TED Talks or, you know, something some something someone says and it's going to lead you in this whole different it could change your life like that doing that led me to this right here mm. you know if i didn't do that i might not we not the three of us i might not know the two of you you know so it's like that one little thing of let me just do this differently today like led to this so it's pretty crazy i my you know i was similar mine like seeing napsumo was like gave me permission to be myself again cuz like i used to be very <laughs> outspoken Yep. I, I had a certain way of saying things. Like, I was always having to clarify because it was like someone would get offended. I was like, no, no, no I meant that as a compliment. Like, I, there's a joke in my family, especially my wife, about how like my compliments are, sound insulting. Like, if you don't know me, like, I, I have to not compliment strangers anymore because they get offended. Basically, like, <laughs> I have a very particular way of like, you know, how I am. And again, like, I, you know, getting into like, you know, being a youth pastor and stuff, I was always getting in trouble. So I had to learn to like tone things down, and there's a way to do things, and then when I, I found, you know, that uh, AppSumo, first the copywriting course, so like Neville comes out, you know, he's like on Noah's balcony, he's like, I'm wearing these glasses, I don't I don't wear glasses, these are fake, this is just because of blah, 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 and he's like waving them around, I was yeah. like, 
who is this idiot and why is he on the internet? You know, like, <laughs> totally inappropriate. And then like literally like, a couple days later, I was like, I think I love that idiot. And then like him and Noah, I started watching the Sumo Dojos, all that kind of stuff. I was like, these guys are awesome. Why I used to be like this? Like you know, why am I you know minus the swearing? But I was like, what other than that, like, why do I let other people tell me how I'm supposed to present myself? And then now I'm turning, you know, so like that kind of gave me permission to like re-figure out who I was. I went a little too far with it with that one business. Like I said, I ended up like offending like 80% of the target market. But I've learned how to like be myself, match that with the right, you know, target since then. But like, yeah, same thing, man. I saw that and it was like, it was like the light of like what life could be like, what a business could be like, you know. Even with my wedding business, it was like, oh, it's a wedding. It had to be formal. They use nice fancy paper. You know, like, why? I just attracted those annoying brides that right. wanted that way. Versus if I did my own thing, even doing weddings, I could have attracted cool brides who wanted cool stuff, you know? Like, I don't know. It just it was very freeing to see that model. And, and uh, it's just kind of funny that we all had the same kind of, like, like guy crush or a business crush. I don't know when we all started. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I just, I, I just pictured Jared walking the street and be like, hey, it's a great shirt, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the way. Horizontal like, stripes, huh? <laughs> no, okay, so I'm trying to think of an example without actually being offensive to one of you. <laughs> okay, here's an example, Mike. I know you're not easily offended. So, like, I've got a lot better at this, but it, it would be something like if I wanted to say um, how I admire that you sold everything and like how you were, you know, how you've done all the stuff, and how inspiring it's been to me. I would start off by like, "Hey, man, like, you know." that's really cool that when your life was totally crappy and just totally sucked and you were, like, all depressed and hated everything, that you made this, you know, a lot of people would have just, like, killed themselves or drank themselves. <laughs> it's really cool that you're like, did you just insult the last X years of my life? Like, what? <laughs> like, hey, no, man, remember like, when you were, like, feeling sorry for yourself? Like, that was cool that you sold all your shit and, like, <laughs> Yeah, and I, I've gotten, like, even when I was younger, I would do that. And, like, my parents would go, hey, did you say this to this person? I was like, yeah, but I was, I was telling them how cool I think it is. But they're like, well, that's not how they took it. They were offended why you were, like, insulting their job. Like, I remember one in particular. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, that's not what I meant at all. So I've had to learn to, like, kind of get over that. But then I've also learned that at some times it's just, like, who cares? You have to be yourself, you know? Like, yeah. you can, if you want to reach nine people out of ten, you're going to probably at least one of that, you know, ten is going to be mad at you for something you said. So it's that line of, like, be true to yourself. And then is it – and I've, I've been able to balance that. Like, you know, like, okay, I go, I'll start to be like, oh, should I have said that? I was like, is it true to myself? No. Okay, I should apologize. Or yes, okay, I just have to toughen up and deal with it because that's, you know, how I want to rep represent myself. So. Yeah. Hey, when, I, when I first met you at the uh, mm -hmm. Life on Fire event. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, two things you got to know about Jared is, one, when you first meet him in person, he's ridiculously tall. Yeah, like, he's like 6'7 or something yeah. ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like, like, I feel really Asian when I stand next to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not short. Like, I'm 5'9", I'm I mean, I feel that's kind of average. But I feel just, just like little ninja standing next to you. <laughs> little ninja. <laughs> It's okay, stand next to you, I felt like, you know, the big giant ogre. So. Yeah, Andre, yeah. man. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he's really tall, and the two, like, yeah, he's really, like, sarcastic, and he makes these jokes, and they're like, you said a couple things to me at, at the event, and I was just kind of looking at you, like, I was like, what? Like, I don't, I don't know if you're joking or not, man. Like, cause you just say so casually. <laughs> and you have like no expression on your face, and you're like, no, nah, I'm just, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I mean, like, I wasn't offended or anything like that. It just, I, I couldn't tell. Like, uh, my my comment about the bulletproof coffee that I think you you're really confused at. You're like, what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember what it was exactly, but yeah. All right. Um, any any last things before we we do our our wrap up here because we're right at an hour. Uh, Gideon, do you want to just uh, make sure you promote what you're doing now too? Since we got to do it in the beginning, just don't forget to do that. Hmm? Do you make sure you promote what you're you're up to? So, oh, actually, yeah. Or let's just jump to that part where we're kind of okay. 
what we're excited that we're working on right now. Getting All right. Okay. So I think I mentioned this the last two times or the first time. Um, so I'm working on an email marketing service for entrepreneurs. Um, I am very, 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 very close to finally writing the entire email sequences and the landing page and like getting it all set up. Um, I'm, I think by the end of this month, I should have at least two clients at like, huh? <laughs> no, 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 good. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I was like, wait, is, is it May or June? I was like, end of which month? But June then, right? Yeah, so by the end of June, I, I should have two clients. Well, I'm hoping by like in a couple weeks, because I, I got some really good prospects lined so up. So like, really quick, like, how could you help me? Like, why should I care that you're launching an email, or whatever service? Like, what is it? What does it do? Yeah, so I mean, like, I know, but <laughs> right. Um, so like the thing with the email marketing is like, there's just a ton of like really crappy emails coming to your inbox, right? And a lot of it's just kind of like whatever is like I signed up for this for like just because you wanted the uh, the freebie opt-in. And then after that it's like, okay, the rest of the emails don't really relate or they're just kind of like, it's just always promotion, promotion, promotion. Like, hey, I got this event. Hey, I got this, my book's coming out. Hey, this webinar is, you know, it's like there's no like connection, right, or relationships actually being built. Like there's right. very few people that I have on my, uh, you know, that I subscribe to where I'm like that I want to read every word that they say, like John Carlton. Because I love copywriting and his stuff and his like raw, you know, lessons. Uh, Derek Halpern, because he always has great like you know psychological selling stuff, and just like a you know a handful of people. But everything else is like, uh, what's his name, Brennan Bruchard. Um, like writing yeah. all these guys down. Derek Hopper, who else and who else? Derek Halpern, uh, John Carlton. Uh, there's. Brendan Bruchard, I don't know how to say his last name. Okay. Um, or like Ryan Lebesque. It's Lebesque, but it's pronounced Lebesque. Um, like, okay. I don't really care for these other guys' emails. And so, like, I'm never going to, like, buy anything from them again, right? So, like, what's the point of having a subscriber if, like, you can't really connect to, like, what the actual problem there is that they're actually having? in the first place that, the, you know, for the reason of them getting your free opt-in, right? Like, that needs to continue. And, like, and then you got to, like, reach out to them, like, hey, have you solved this problem? Or are you still struggling with it? So then you can kind of, like, get a better feel for, like, who your actually, you know, your real customers are and what their real problems are and what, how you can actually help them so that they actually buy. So that's a problem that I'm seeing. And the way that I, you know, want to help entrepreneurs with all of that is, you know, setting up your entire email marketing system so that you can, like, pretty much automate your sales through email just as one channel. Like, that's just what I want to niche down on as, like, the email marketing expert guy. Um, setting up, like, all the taggings and automations in email so that you don't have to, like... So, like, I don't know, do you guys use MailChimp? That's a pain in the ass, dude. That's a lot of thought process to go into, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I I kind of have a system for working that out. Nice. Um, so Mailchimp, it's like Mailchimp hates marketers, or something. I don't know. Like really, I I, I love them. I, I love Mailchimp. I you know I got my Mailchimp shirt on. Right. Um, we'll we'll have to pause that and put that as like the picture. Like to watch the show. Yeah. Mailchimp. <laughs> I'm hitting them up for sponsorship right now. Nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so okay, so Mailchimp is not good for marketers. Why? Well. So, like, they make it really difficult. So, like, if you're, set, you're setting up your lists, right, and, like, let's say you have a single list for your main opt-in, and then you want to track somebody who's bought from you, from an email that you sent out, right? Mm -hmm. And then you want to put those people on a buyer's list so that you're communicating with them differently than you are with people who haven't bought yet, right? Because they're on a different level now. Oh, I never thought about that. There's a solution to that, actually. If, if you know what you do? Not you use Mailchimp. You buy Infusionsoft. If, no, screw Infusionsoft. So you're both right. <laughs> Basically. Oh, oh, I mean, Mailchimp doesn't make it easy. Make it easy for you to do that. So like, you have to have two two separate lists. But then, you can't like automate them to go into a different list. Can you segment it? 
You can you can tag the people who bought and and you could send out different emails to them though. Yeah, yeah so I tried all that stuff is like yeah, I'm sure you're about to say like I've done a lot with that and it's like it's not the easiest and it's hard to like your options are limited to try to like brute force to try to make them go from here to here and it's not the most fun. Okay. Yeah. So you have to do it manually though. Uh, so you have to like find all your customers who bought, go into their go into the list, find their emails, and then tag them or segment them. You know, I've never even thought about doing that. And granted, I've never had really had anyone who's bought because no, I can't say that. I had like a couple people buy through an email, but all of my sales are on a face to face or in a phone call. It's never go to this page and buy. So I never could track in that sense who bought through that. Right. Um, yeah, yeah so that's that sounds like super helpful. So if you're like, oh, free offer, and then like you have like a thirty-seven dollar product, and you've got a, a ninety-seven dollar product, and you've got you know what I mean? like like Kim or Luna, for example, where she had like she has a free offer, and then she's got whatever pro paid products, and she does her videos for like you know forty bucks replays or whatever, all the way up to like her two thousand dollar main product. That becomes really important to be able to because you don't want to be telling someone. Hey, my ninety-seven dollar product is on sale for fifty bucks. When and send that email to someone who just last week bought that for ninety-seven. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Ah. Uh, hmm. But it's also like the you know the ladder of ascension, right? So like if they bought like your five dollar product, I was like, okay, these people bought a five dollar product. Now I can shoot this email out to them to raise them up to this you know forty-seven dollar product that further helps them solve their problems. Right. You know, so you like you can stop send the them. emails to try to sell them the five dollar product because that's just as bad as like, hey, buy it. And you're like, I already bought it. Leave me alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would always get emails, right? Like if I bought something, I'm like, dude, like, why are you saying this, sending me this email again? Like I bought, right? Like why aren't you tracking this? Like I already bought. It. I don't want. I don't want to see it. It's like Citibank sending you the uh, application, even though you have the damn card in your wallet for like yeah. a year. Like, you've been yeah. pre-approved. You're like, I've banked with you for ten years. I know. I hate that. I'm like, you assholes. Like, how? This is the worst customer service right now. <laughs> right. It's exactly like that. They're not segmenting, right? They're not. They're not tracking who's like their actual customers or like cross-referencing. Are you using Mailchimp yourself for your list, or are you using different one? I, I was. Uh, I just suspended the account, and I'm using Active Campaign now okay. because it has all the tagging and segment segmenting like automatically. So you can set up rules for it. Uh, can you transfer your all like if you have a whole backend thing built? Can you seamlessly integrate that into a new software system like that? That's called Gideon. You you pay him yeah. money. You seamlessly. Oh build. yeah. I yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why his service is so valuable. I thought it was more okay because I thought it was more. I, mean, I didn't. If there's all these different parts and what makes this valuable. Like having that's huge value. Having you write it's huge value. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to make sure you uh, make that go. Next meeting starting in five minutes. What's that? Did you guys get that? No. Now it's your calendar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a meeting. What is this? <laughs> Someone's trying to like. Hook you into a meeting, like oh, I really want to talk to this Mike guy. Let me just set a meeting, and hopefully he accepts it. It's like I'm like, go out and buy lubrication. What is that? Were you guys getting this? <laughs> <laughs> why is that a group message? All right, since we're, we're already laughing at you, Mike, why don't you go ahead and talk about what you're uh, you're working on right now? That was my intro. You like that? I'm gonna get salesy. Now, um, I came up with an idea. Um, I turned over to doing more health coaching about um, uh, two months ago, or two and a half months, or a month and a half ago. And within that, I came up with an idea for people who might want to challenge. So they might be going to a gym and they're just not eating healthy, or they um, are eating healthy but they want to go to a gym, or they are doing everything by themselves and want to get group support. So I came up with this tiered system to challenge people, and what it is is you go through different levels, and it's things like you know running a, a mile under nine minutes or eventually under six minutes and thirty seconds. It's running anywhere from you know you might be good at running three miles, but eventually you have to run eight, or eventually you have to run a half marathon. Another one is can you give up dairy for seven to ninety days? And there's other things. So it's all these different categories where if you're at 10 or 90%, how can you get at 100% of what you really want to become? And I, and I 
develop this idea, this product where it's going to be based on it's a ch it's four tiers of a challenge, it's group based, and I believe that community is the best way to get people off their ass and and hold you accountable. So that's what this thing is, and I'm working on it right now to launch it. So you know, for the technical aspect of it, I'm developing this whole back end thing on how to do this, but um, the product itself that should be launching pretty soon. So I'll just keep talking about that until it's finally up, and then I'm just going to promote the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, and so kind of like I want to answer for you some of the value of this because, you know, you asked that to give you and like, okay, the level of the value. So for me, I know, so like we had our call yesterday. I've been your guinea pig, right, and talking about all this. Uh, I kind of hit this plateau, and so yesterday we had this hour-long talk about like all these ideas of things to kind of help with it. And it was like, oh, okay, get a buddy, and I did that, and then so now we're going to go out and do some stuff. I'm like, ah, still not that excited about that. And, that. and today I woke up, and I'm like, man, today's even worse than yesterday. And then just listening to you talk, it dawned on me. I was like, yeah, that's what I need is that challenge. Like, the best I did was when you did that seven-day challenge. And I'm, I'm thinking, and I get up, I'm like, yeah. And, like, you know, you talk about your why. I'm like, yeah, my why, but I can get back to that. I'm like, what? You know, I, but it's like that challenge, right? If you're, like, 30 days into a 90-day challenge, you're not. You're very less likely, you know, to, to drop it. Or if you're three days into a seven-day challenge, so I was like, to me, that's huge because it's like now that I've gotten through, I'm like, I'm on like week seven, I think, and I've kind of hit that plateau to where I was losing a ton of weight, I was getting really healthy, and now I'm just feeling kind of stagnant. I'm like, yeah, give me a challenge, like that's to get me back into this thing, to get me revved up because yeah, just just the whole lifetime of change and happiness isn't doing it for me anymore. <laughs> Like I want to, I want to accomplish something. So I was like, yeah, what's that first thirty-day challenge? I want to go out there and knock this out and, and be super excited about it. And it's huge to have that. And then by the time you're done with it, like, like you've told me some of the things, like to get through to like the, the highest level. I'm like, holy crap! Like when I'm done with that, like I could see like what kind of person am I gonna be? Like I'm gonna be a different person, and we've got a whole new level in the fitness game. Uh, a whole new set of obviously challenges, but like all these now, I'll be done with. Like I'll be past this, and so like to me, I'm super excited for it to launch. I'm like, uh, I asked you the other day, is this launched yet? I want to start it. Yeah, I was thinking about it yesterday when we were talking. I was like, this thing would be really good for you, but I, I don't know. I'm just really excited about it because I just sat down, I sketched out every single detail of it, and I broke it up into you know, here's the things you got to give up. It's come from exercise to diet, and it breaks it up into different, you know weeks and days and things like that and I don't know like I'm kind of excited about because it's not just about the challenge and all that it's really about when you level up the, the, the different like where your mind is going to be and where your body is going to be is going to be so different because you you know to run a half marathon you've got to be you know you got to be busting your ass to do that and to give up like let's say alcohol for three months. I mean, and if you are just biggest into socializing, that's a huge change, and you're going to see a giant change in your body. So if you have other people that too are you're supporting you, um, I just see this thing just being fucking like gigantic. So I'm really excited about it. Um, really, and I'm just I'm overthinking the marketing on it, and I just I just I'm sitting down this week, and it's like Gideon's taken. He's called it Action Week for his emails. So for me, it's just the just get the bare basics up and get this thing out because I just want to really see and get people fired up about it. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm going to call it the um, make some noise challenge because I think that everyone, that's like my tagline in life is I always want to make noise and I think that anyone out there, they really want to make a difference. It's like, you know, make some noise with your life. So that's it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah I'm here. We can hear you. We can hear you again. Yeah. No, Jared, go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I thought you had a question. I thought you had a question, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for me, like, I'm finally launching my, my email course, which I'm really excited about because it, it's essentially the last two years of, of work. Not of working on the course, but of learning both uh, email sales and business development, and I took Nate ideas for that, you know, two, two years I did it, and it was all through emails and messages. Like I didn't do any, I didn't do ads, I didn't do like networking events. Um, it was like 100% just 
finding prospects and then like saying, hey, I see this, or hey, I see what you're doing, I have a solution, and going from cold emails. Um, so I did that for myself for two years. I did for, I mean, for a couple other clients. Uh, one as a, a, was like a marketing SEO firm, and then another one being a uh, design, just doing cold emails and business development through email. And so I basically have taken the last two years of learning all this for myself and for these other clients and all the stuff, I put it together in a course and I created it and I'm, la I'm launching it. I guess I've technically launched it. It's live. I just haven't started promoting it yet. So today is like my first day to say, hey, you, you know, check it out. Um, so it's like my email mastery course. And so if you go to bizdevheroes.com, you look at the menu bar, it'll say about, blog, and then it'll say like email mastery. So if you click on that, it'll take you to all the information about it. If you're wanting to increase your freelancing, or even like for Mike, if you know if Mike was still really trying to grow Drive 80, it'd be you know for him to be able to get in there, figure out you know who like if he goes oh this X company I'd love to do a video for, find the right person, get in there, get their email templates to be able to send them examples of good and bad emails and all that whole process to be able to like find the key people in organizations you need to talk to and send them an example of your work and you know, start to get work off of it. So, um, yeah, bizdevheroes.com, and just click on the email mastery course, and you can read more about it. And that's it. Nice. All right. Double nice. <laughs> so that wraps up for today. It Actually, today was a perfect segue for um, next week, because next week we are talking about... Um, basically the whole nature versus nurture in the entrepreneur world. Can you, you have to be born as an entrepreneur or can you develop it? And so mm. we're talking today about all of our failed businesses that kind of sets us up for next week, jumping into that whole concept. I'm very excited to have Gideon on because, sorry, I just dropped something. I'm very excited to have Gideon on because I've actually heard his rant on this and it's like really entertaining and it's really like passionate and, and it's really fun to listen to. So definitely you want to hear him get on there and, and rant about that on his. And then hopefully Mike and I can say something equally as uh, important and entertaining. As but rantable. It, yes, exactly. We'll have to, yeah. I don't, to I don't remember that. what I said. Well, you better get back in, in that Dude, rant mindset. This setup is just too epic right now. You better bring it next week. <laughs> Actually, right? it was one of the podcasts. You need to go re-listen to that podcast and memorize it like a speech and just be as passionate. So, or maybe we'll just cut that in and pretend <laughs> Um, okay, so really quick before I actually uh, close this off here, go over to just a quick call to action for you guys. Go over to Facebook if you have an account, and just in the search bar, look for uh, Entrepreneurs Roundtable, and, or message one of us to add you, and we would love to have you in that group. It's basically like this, except for it's ongoing, and then you can actually interact more. You can ask questions, or constantly, you know, us and other community members are giving it examples, posting links to the right resources, and just being encouraging and helping out. So it's a great little uh, mastermind to help grow your business. And I guess that's it. Anything else you guys want to say before we sign off? I can't wait till you shave your head. Yeah, that's right. Um, share this. Let's get 100 views, and then I will record myself shaving my head. And then I will look like Gideon did when I first met him with no hair. But I had hair. It was you, amazing. You had a little bit of hair, but mine will be, mine will be shorter <laughs> than that. Cool. Okay. All right, guys. See you next week. Thanks so much.